Let's start by clarifying the name of this guy. In the US it is known as the VivoBook K571. However, around the world, you can find it by the X571 and N571 moniker. Yep, similarly to the Netherlands, which is known as Holland, Asus was not very decisive, so we are going to use the VivoBook K571 from now on. Other than that, the laptop belongs to the budget gaming notebook market. What else is there? The Lenovo IDPad L340 Gaming 15, HP Pavilion Gaming 15, 2019, Dell G3 3590 and more. Similarly to them, the VivoBook K571 features a brand new design, both inside and out. It can be purchased with either a TN or an IPS panel with a full HD resolution. In terms of hardware, Asus offers the notebook with either the Core i5-9300H or the Core i7-9750H, while GPU-wise you can pick from the GE Force GTX 1050 and the GTX 1650, both equipped with 4GB of GDDR5 memory. Of course, when we talk about budget gaming machines, one should expect some setbacks. The most common of them are poor build quality tiny battery or budget panel for the display. Nevertheless, we see this notebook as a pretty well executed and has a modern design that is well though. However, did this change when we used it for a while? Let's see. Design and Construction In terms of building materials, the VivoBook K571 features only plastic. As we mentioned, we were not expecting anything different from something at this price point. Additionally, the weight and height are not that impressive either, the laptop stands at 21.9 mm and weighs 2.14 kg, 4.72 pounds. Similarly to the ZenBooks and VivoBooks, equipped with much lesser hardware, the VivoBook K571 features an ergo lift hinge. Basically, what it does is it lifts the backside of the base so that there is more breathing space for the fans and ultimately, a more ergonomic feel when you type. However, the case with this device is that you have to push the display almost all the way to the farthest point it can go in order for the lid to act as a lever. This means, that in most cases, it will be uncomfortable to work like that, so you may not be able to experience its perks on a daily basis. Additionally, the lid cannot be opened with a single hand. Moreover, when you give it flex to the sides it moves quite a lot, causing the display to produce some weird bubble-like effects, similarly to when you press upon the pixels really hard. On the bright side, there is a camera, which is placed on its orthodox position above the screen. Then, moving to the base, we see a keyboard that features the number pad segment. Yes, its keys are smaller than the rest of them, but it is good to see that there is any form of number pad whatsoever. In addition to that, there is a backlight, and furthermore, the keyboard is fairly comfortable to use. It has a rather long keystroke and while the feedback cannot be considered as super clicky, it is not soft either. Other than that, the arrow keys are super tiny, which is not great for some gamers. Lastly, let's turn the laptop upside down and check out the massive ventilation grill. Here. You can also find the speaker cutouts. What is interesting is the way the device exhausts its hot air. When the VivoBook K571 is in a closed position, you can see the ventilation on the back. However, in an upright pose, the hot air is blown at the display. On the bright side, there is a certain angle to the exhaust cutouts, which guides the air upwards, rather than force it directly at the lid. Shortly. We will see how this affects the thermals around the notebook. Ports On the left side, you can see the charging plug, as well as an RJ45 connector, an HDMI connector, a USB Type-A 3.1, General 1, port, a USB Type-C 3.1, General 1, port and an audio combo jack. Then, on the right, there are two USB Type-A 2.0 ports and an SD card reader. Display Quality Asus VivoBook K571 comes with a full HD IPS panel, 
model number LG LP156 WFC SPD1, LG D0563. Its diagonal is 15.6 inches, 39.62 centimeters, and the resolution, 1920-1080p. Additionally, the screen ratio is 16 to 9, the pixel density, 142 p. Their pitch, 0.18 by 0.18 millimeters. The screen can be considered retina when viewed from at least 60 centimeters, from this distance. The average human eye can't see the individual pixels. The maximum measured brightness is 235 nits, CD slash M2, in the middle of the screen and 227 nits, CD slash M2, average across the surface with a maximum deviation of 12%. The correlated color temperature on a white screen and at maximum brightness is 6140K, average warmer than the 6500K optimum for sRGB. The average color temperature through the gray scale before profiling is 6120K. In the illustration below you can see how the display performs from uniformity perspective. The illustration below shows how matters are for operational brightness levels, approximately 140 nits, in this particular case at 59% brightness. White level equals 141 CD slash M2, black level equals 0.12 CD slash M2. Values of the 2000 over 4.0 should not occur, and this parameter is one of the first you should check if you intend to use the laptop for color sensitive work, a maximum tolerance of 2.0. The contrast ratio is excellent, 1160 to 1. 1090 to 1 after profiling. The next figure shows how well the display is able to reproduce really dark parts of an image, which is essential when watching movies or playing games in low ambient light. The left side of the image represents the display with stock settings, while the right one is with the gaming and web design profile activated. On the horizontal axis, you will find the grayscale and on the vertical axis, the luminance of the display. On the two graphs below you can easily check for yourself how your display handles the darkest nuances but keep in mind that this also depends on the settings of your current display, the calibration, the viewing angle, and the surrounding light conditions. Blue Light Emissions Installing our Health Guard profile not only eliminates PWM but also reduces the harmful blue light emissions while keeping the colors of the screen perceptually accurate. If you're not familiar with the blue light, the TL, doctor version is, emissions that negatively affect your eyes, skin and your whole body. You can find more information about that in our dedicated article on blue light. Conclusions Asus VivoBook K571 has an IPS panel with a full HD resolution, comfortable viewing angles, good contrast ratio, and adequate default settings. Additionally, it doesn't use PWM for brightness adjustment, while its only disadvantage is the modest color coverage.